Hey, Vinyl Community Mark here from Sound Matters. Today we ask the question, are music fans really quitting streaming in favour of physical formats such as vinyl, CD, and actually sometimes even digital files? Are people falling out of love with the idea of streaming music on tap? That's today's topic, so let's get straight into the video. So this is a topic that I ponder over quite a lot and I was reminded about this subject and many of the things that underpin why I run Sound Matters as a website in the first place. So I was suggested this article to read and it's an article by The Guardian and it's basically the premise is here that there's endless choice but you're not listening. Fans quitting Spotify to save their love of music and many of the comments that were in here resonated with a lot of my own experiences and I I'm guessing that if you're subscribed to this channel or you're watching this video, you probably have very similar feelings yourself. But just to kind of echo this article a little bit, because it's a topic I talk about a lot at the website, that kind of importance of music ownership in terms of the overall value of music and for your greater experience. So I've written my own response article to this. I'm just going to go through some of it with you now and then invite you to share your own experiences down in the comments as usual. So there'll be links in the description below if you want to check out the full versions of both the Guardian article and my take on this subject. So this is my take on the same subject over at the website. I will not read all of this out to you because I will probably bore you to tears, but you can check it out for yourself. Link in the description below, of course, in your own time. But I'll just pull out some of the highlights as talking points and we can share it as a vinyl community. So somehow, I think really a lot of this is down to free and abundant choice. So somehow with unlimited and free access to an abundance of music choice, then music has descended from a foreground activity to a background activity. So instead of people sitting down and just listening to the album, that being the main thing that perhaps they were doing with their time, it's just background fodder for something else that they're doing in their lives. And because you've not invested money up front to save for an album to take it home as entertainment, you're perhaps immediately less invested right up front from the get-go. You're less emotionally invested because you've not had to foot the bill for it really other than your subscription fee per month which is nothing it's like the price of one cd was probably back in the 90s right so it's nothing it's basically free and abundant and of course you can go out there and go on youtube and listen to countless amounts of music for free as well so there's less investment from the consumer there and somehow it's just so easy and there's so much of an abundance of choice so it's just a background activity now it's less important it's not the only thing well it never was the only thing but what i'm probably getting at here is that essentially people have a lot more choice now in terms of entertainment and it's a lot more abundant and it's based basically almost free. So if you're a real music lover, you really love music, then this downgrading of the experience and the importance of music in your life is likely a problem for you. I know it was for me and my experience was, and this, the, much of the comments in the Guardian article really echo this for me, but my personal experience was that I was going back and forward from Canada and England and vice versa basically, and in doing so I couldn't take my record collection with me or my CDs mostly that I had at the time, so I uploaded all of those to my laptop top and they just sat there on my iTunes library and in doing so that really downgraded my experience of listening to music and it I just became less bothered somehow and that became a bit of a problem for me and that's really what drove me to reintroduce elements of physical media be it vinyl be it more CDs or anything basically that wasn't just a invisible thing on my laptop or in the cloud in terms of a streaming experience. So that was my experience. I think what we're seeing with the people that were interviewed in that Guardian article is music lovers just taking back control of their love of music, reintroducing those formats because there's just something missing. So here's a little anecdote that I think a lot of you can probably relate to. If you've ever sat there 
of an evening with your family and endlessly scrolled through the list of films to watch on Netflix and been unable to make any sort of choice whatsoever, then you'll probably be very familiar with how this translates into music streaming as well. It's somehow when we're faced with an abundance of choice, you kind of introduce an element of what you would call analysis paralysis. So in other words, when faced with too many options and an abundance of choice, we ultimately basically choose nothing. So quite sadly, what I think this ends up leading to is faced with the analysis paralysis situation, a lot of people will just shout generic demands at things like smart speakers and the like. So they'll end up shouting things like play barbecue music or play the top 40. They're just looking for a generic playlist to be in the background of whatever it is that they're doing in the foreground. It really downgrades the experience of music and really people aren't even choosing their own music anymore. They're putting that music discovery or their whole experience experience of music in the hands of a single streaming corporation and even if you're one of these people who chooses to listen to whole albums on streaming services even if you go that far if you're still into music enough to do that to seek out proper albums and real artists and make your own choices you're still then based on an algorithm after you've listened to that music given kind of generic recommendations of what the algorithm or what the software the streaming service thinks you will like based on what you've just been listening to and to me compared with sharing music with friends and going down to your local record store this feels like the musical equivalent of a kind of straight jacket so back over at the website here and on the article, I've got some statistics that obviously appear to back some of this stuff up. And many of you will be aware of, of course, the major growth in vinyl revenue over recent years. So according to the RIAA 2021 statistics, both CDs and vinyl records experienced revenue growth for the first time since 1996. Vinyl records led the way and accounted for 63% of revenues from physical formats. Revenue from vinyl grew 61% to 1 billion in 2021, solidifying the 15th consecutive year in a row of growth for a format that was once written off as obsolete. So what does this all represent when all is said and done? Those statistics are interesting and I think they really clearly demonstrate that there's some sort of hole in their musical lives left behind by streaming that they're trying to fill with physical media like vinyl and CD. But what does it not mean? I, I think I'm under no illusion that vinyl is ever going to be the main consumer format ever again, or even CDs for that matter. Clearly things have moved on from a technological viewpoint and a convenience viewpoint that streaming is going to be the way forward for the foreseeable future. But it does represent some sort of change in consumer habits. It's nice to see the two kind of being able to sit side by side, of course, and a lot of this is new. A lot of you are aware of this going on. If you're watching this channel, it probably means something to you to own the physical product and get that whole experience with the artwork and the physical process of putting the record on, all of those things that we talk about on a almost weekly or even daily basis in the vinyl community. But... It's always going to be a niche. It's always going to remain a niche going forward. And the good thing is, in the society that we live in now, it doesn't have to be, of course, a, a binary choice either. And there will be purists who will never embrace streaming in any way, shape or form. But I think probably for the vast majority of people, it's some sort of combination of the two. So naturally, of course, there will always be naysayers out there that will write off the so-called vinyl revival, if you want to use that term, as a fad. But the thing is, fads don't tend to last 15 years, in my experience. And I do, naturally, as somebody who runs a, a vinyl record publication, I get these comments on an almost weekly basis, sometimes daily. Here's one that I received recently, which is quite amusing because it's technically inaccurate as well, but it says, sorry, metal scraping plastic is just silly these days. Of course, it's a stylus. You and I know that. We're not talking about a gramophone here. But the point he's making is that, well, it's old-fashioned. It's out of hat. There's more efficient more modern ways of doing these things and it's kind of like making a statement that just because 
it's making a statement that, that newer technology has come and replaced it, so it's pointless. And I think that's akin to basically saying the equivalent of, well, there's no point living in that beautiful old historic house because it's not as good at retaining heat as this shiny new house that is engineered to be much more efficient in that way the trouble is with that kind of methodology naturally if you're somebody like me then living in an old home you're getting character you're getting history the a, a new home that's ultra efficient can never have the same charm and character as one of those old properties just as an analogy of what i think it's it's like in terms of that attitude to music to write vinyl off just because it is old-fashioned technology as such is i think just missing the point as i say and which kind of leads me to the way that i'd like to wrap up my points on this at least for now and then hand it over to you but there's a lovely quote that i think really suited the end of this topic in this article really well and it's from a austrian journalist ernst um, fisher and it says basically that as machines become more and more efficient and perfect so it will become clear that imperfection is the greatness of man long live imperfect perfectly imperfect vinyl so that concludes today's video thank you ever so much for watching as always what do you think about this topic let me know down in the comments below as always do you think i've got this right do you think i've got this wrong what do you think the long-term trends and outlook looks like for vinyl going forward do you think we're going to continue to see more of this less of this is it a bit of a fad a temporary glitch let me know down in the comments as always i'm always keen to hear from you but if you're new to this channel please do consider subscribing i'd love to have you on board and i will look forward to seeing you in that next video but until then keep spinning